Hi everybody, it's Christopher and welcome to Life's Not Over, It Just Looks Different on YouTube. I have a question for you. Have you ever done a scrapbook? Some of us might have only done one in our lives, back in elementary school when our teachers would make us go outside, gather a bunch of leaves, press them, dry them, and then fasten them into a book, whether with glue or tape or whatever, to form a scrapbook. And that might have been the only one that you've ever done. In the last two decades, scrapbooking has become an activity that a lot of people like to participate in. And some people throw scrapbook parties, getting together and cutting and pasting and making their book and each page look really unique and pretty and all very uniform with what they're putting into it. Some people put together scrapbooks like this old one that used to belong to my grandmother with a bunch of newspaper clippings in it and things that she wanted to save over the years. It's a pretty fragile book, but it's part of her legacy. When I was a kid, I did another scrapbook as well, and I did one on my favorite hockey team, the New York Islanders. And I'm going to come back to this book in a minute because there's more to tell there. But I have a different spin on the scrapbook for you. Have you ever thought of your life as a scrapbook? Up in here, you have an endless number of pages to store memories, experiences, people, places, all of those things. And it's all in here. And you can call on those memories anytime you want. You can recall them when you're sharing a story with a friend, or maybe you just need a moment when you need to think of something happier and you can think of a happier time. So this right here, rather than the other books I've shown you, this is an endless number of pages that you can store all of these memories and photos and things in. And in today's video, I'm going to show you some of the things that are in my scrapbook. First, I want to tell you about a couple of uh, well-known people that I've met. The first one being my favorite country singer, Lisa Brokop. And in fact, in 2003, one of my favorite memories is she was playing a bunch of dates around uh, southern and southwest Ontario. So I made it my mission that summer to go and see her in every different place that she played. And I probably saw her about a half a dozen times that summer and had a really good time with it. Even got my picture taken with her, as you can see here. And yes, that is me under that hat and goatee. It was so much fun and it gave me stories and memories that I wouldn't have expected from going to these small towns. Like for instance, in one small town, I bought tickets to see her play, but it turned out that it was actually part of a bigger event going on in that little town. And there was a, a dinner for all the townsfolk and it was great. It was a wonderful time. Another famous person that I met um, was Mike Bossy, my all-time favorite hockey player, who played uh, for the New York Islanders in the 80s, uh, war number 22 with the right wing. And I, I actually met him twice, sort of. When I was a young guy, probably about 12 years old, I was living in Winnipeg and I went to a Winnipeg Jets game and uh, they were playing the Islanders. And after it was over, my dad took me down so that we could hang out outside of the dressing room and wait for the players to come out. And when he came out, he was signing a bunch of autographs. And so I got him to sign a picture that I had of him, which was fantastic. Um, but I didn't really get to talk to him. It was just sort of a passing thing. In early 2000s, uh, probably about 2004, um, I was working for Global Television in Toronto. And we were doing a daily talk show that we had. So we shot that day's episode and afterwards we were uh, recording a few promos for upcoming episodes. And in one of the upcoming episodes, the announcer said that one of her guests was going to be Mike Bossy. And I got so excited. I went running down to the control room and I said, okay, when is he going to be here? I got to meet him. I, when, when is he going to be here? So they said, oh, are you a fan? <laughs> yes. Um, so they said, yo, he'll be here on this date at this time. And I said, okay, fantastic. So on that day, I happen to have the day off. I brought this scrapbook with me and I showed it to 
the other members of the crew and I showed it to the show host and she flipped through it a little bit and she thought, this is absolutely fabulous. Can I take this with me? And uh, so she took it on set with her. They, they didn't refer to the book at all during the broadcast or during the taping of the episode. But when it was over, um, I was waiting outside of the studio door and Mike Bossy came out. And as he came out, he was flipping through my scrapbook. And then he looked up at me and he said, is this yours? And I said, yes, it is. And he said, you're worse than my mother. That was the greatest compliment he ever could have paid me. Um, we went off to the green room where we sat down. I got to sit next to him and we talked a little bit and uh, he signed a few other autographs for a few other people that were in the building that day. Um, but yeah, I got to spend some time with my hockey hero. He signed my scrapbook and gave me one of the best memories ever that is now firmly implanted in my scrapbook. And on this one too. Another thing that is in my uh, scrapbook of memories up here in between my ears is my adventurous side. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's not that much of a secret, I suppose, but I am afraid of heights. I don't like ladders. I don't like climbing trees. I never did. And even when I was a kid, going on the jungle gym at school just wasn't for me. I stayed on the lower rungs while my friends were up and over and flipping themselves off of it and doing all kinds of things, but not me. I was afraid of heights. Maybe I was just afraid of falling, who knows? But those were never things that I wanted to do. However, I have done a bungee jump, I've done two zip lines, and I've hung off the edge of the CN Tower in Toronto, Canada, doing what they call the CN Tower Edge Walk. Back in the early 90s, um, bungee jumping was all the rage. And I was visiting Calgary for the first time. I now live here, but back then I was just visiting for the first time. And my friend and I, we, would, we had gone around and seen a bunch of the sites. We'd been out to the mountains. We went to the Calgary Zoo. Uh, we went to Heritage Park. And then we went out to Canada Olympic Park, which was the site of uh, one of the sites for the 1988 Winter Olympics. And when we got to Canada Olympic Park, um, we noticed I could see behind the building that there was this very tall tower that they had put up um, for a temporary bungee jump structure. And I had seen a lot of people bungee jump and I thought, well, you know what? I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I kind of maybe went, might like to try that someday. So there was my opportunity. So we went into the building and we found the desk where they were talking about the bungee jump and they had a video monitor on their table showing video of a bunch of people doing it just over and over and over again, making it look like a lot of fun. And I was nervous. I was hesitant. And I thought, I don't know. I and mean, you know, I talked to the staff and I watched the video and it took a while of me watching this video on their, on their monitor and talking to the staff before they finally convinced me to do the bungee jump. And so I signed the forms, signed my life away, basically. Uh, they led me out to the staging area. They got me all hooked up. They put the bracelets on my ankles, on a Y cord. And, uh, and they gave me three options that day. They said, do you want to splash through the water? Because they had a pool of water below the bungee jump site. They said, do you want to splash through the water? Do you just want to touch the water? Or do you want to stay dry? And I wanted to stay dry, one, because my friend and I had other places we wanted to be that day. But also I thought if I choose to stay dry, then they won't accidentally put out too much cord. That was the thinking through my head. Um, so they got me hooked up. I got in the basket. I'm going up in this basket with one of the staff. And as we're going up and I'm watching the ground get further and further away, my fear and anxiety are building. And, uh, and I said to the guy as we're going up, I'm like, oh no, I, said, I forgot to go to the washroom before we did this. And he said, ah, don't worry about it. You'll go on the way down. Thanks. We got to the top and as I was at the, the highest point on the, uh, in the basket, I'm looking out and I've got Calgary off to my east and I've got off to the west, you can see the Rocky Mountains, and out in front of me is 
the main building of Canada Olympic Park, which was looking uh, much smaller. And you can see all the parking lot and all the people. And I was scared. Oh man, was I ever scared. But I, and I don't even know how long I was up there, to be honest with you. But eventually the, the staff member who was up there with me, he said, look, if you don't do this soon, this is going to be the most expensive elevator ride you've ever taken. And I thought, oh, right. If I don't do this, I'm out 50 bucks. And I'd have to live it down with my friend who I was touring around with. So I finally decided that I was going to do the bungee jump. So I stepped up close to the edge of the basket. The guy yelled out, three, two, one, bungee. And I leapt. And after that, I don't remember anything until I felt the cord slowing me down. And then I went back up and I went back down and I went back up again and I went back down. And I probably bounced two or three times before it all finally came to a stop and I was dangling at the end of this bungee cord waiting for them to lower me down. And I became very conscious of the fact that my all of my weight was being supported by these bracelets around my ankles and that I was dangling and I started yelling, get me down. <laughs> so they finally got me to a point They they lowered me down. One of the other workers grabbed me by the hands, led me over to this large gymnastic uh, crash mat where they like unhooked me and everything else. And I just sort of laid there prone, kind of still in shock at what I had just done. But it's all in here now. I remember it. I've got a few pictures, but I've also got all of those other memories that go with it on that what kind of day that was, and they all form a part of my scrapbook that's in here. That wasn't the only time I decided to test my fear of heights. I've also done a couple of zip lines. Uh, the first one was in 2012. They had a zip line across Stampede Park in Calgary, and that was actually my first summer in Calgary when I had first come to live here. Um, so of course I saw the zip line and I had to try it. And it was actually a lot of fun flying across the stampede grounds over people's heads and having people look up and, wa and go, wow, this is they watched some guy fly across. That was me. Um, I did another one in Las Vegas just in uh, 2019, which was an absolute blast as well, um, because that one went over Fremont Street. And so that was a lot of cool, very cool. There was a big spectacle. There was four of us went down at the same time. Um, it was actually a wonderful experience that, uh, you know, flying all the, flying over the people on Fremont Street and having everybody look up as you're going over their heads and just the whole, I mean, the whole spectacle of Las Vegas as it is too, um, was, a, was also a great time. Another time uh, I was in Los Angeles and I had to tackle the sky slide. Okay, I didn't have to tackle it. I wanted to tackle it because it looked like something really fun and cool to do. So uh, I had to take on that adventure, uh, my first visit to Los Angeles. That was one of the things that was on my list of things to do while I was there. Something else I got to do now in 2012, just before I left uh, Toronto to move to Calgary, they had opened up a thing called the CN Tower Edge Walk. And it looked like a lot of fun. So I wanted to try it, but at the time I was on crutches, so I wasn't able to do it and I knew that I would have to uh, do it the next time I was back in Toronto. So when I was there in 2014, that was absolutely on my list of things to do. And I put up the call to some friends and I said, hey, I'm going to do the C CN Tower Edge Walk. Who's coming with me? And I got back responses of, heck no, no way, too scary. Um, excuse me, but I'll watch from the ground. Another person said, I think I'm washing my hair that day. So I undeterred, I wanted to do this, so I went for it and I signed up and it actually turned out um, they take you out a maximum of six at a time and there were, they kind of included me in a group with uh, some other people. So there were uh, two gentlemen there from Texas that day. There were two ladies from Edmonton, a lady from Germany and me. And we got all suited up in the fancy red jumpsuit that you see here. And they made us sit and wait for a while while they told us about what the experience was gonna be like. Um, and then it was our turn. So they took us up the elevator. We walked out. We were in this little room and we walked out of the little room and they had hooked us up on a couple of cables, one on the front, one on the back. And there was a track that the cables ran along um, and it kind of led you out and it led you all the way around the, on top of the revolving restaurant of the CN Tower. 
and while you were out there walking on this track, it um, they they would stop occasionally and say, okay, well, off to here you can see Lake Ontario, and over here you can see uh, the Rogers Center, the Sky Dome, Air Canada Center. So all of these different um, venues around Toronto, they kind of you know give you a moment to look out and see. But then they also had us have a little fun with it, where the first time we did it, they had us uh, walk to the edge of the thing, put the big black cord right inside of our uh, shoulder here, and then lead forward off of the edge of the tower looking down over Toronto. That was pretty interesting. Uh, and then we went a little further and they said, okay, now we're gonna do it differently. And they had us, um, they wanted us to like walk backwards with our feet uh, on just off the edge of the tower, stretch out, got the rope in front of you. And then the guy said, okay, let go of the rope. And the first time he told me to do that, I was like, ah, uh, no, I'm good. And I stepped back on. And I felt really bad because he said to me, well, I actually wanted you to stay out there so I could get a picture of all of you. And the other five all did it. And I felt like a complete idiot for chickening out. But luckily he gave us another opportunity to do it. And uh, so there is a picture of the six of us. And there's also, uh, he also did it where we could get a picture uh, each one by one, as you see here. So that was um, another time when I just had to test these, uh, th this fear of heights that I have. Again, more things that form all the memories in this scrapbook right up here. One thing that it can also form part of your scrapbook is people. Whether it's, like I mentioned earlier, some famous people that you've met, or whether they're just regular people in your life. If you saw my previous video, I mentioned that um, my father has passed away and I miss him terribly, but I still have many great memories of times with him up here in my scrapbook. For instance, he took me to one of my first concerts, which was absolutely fabulous. And turns out it's, this was a local band that we were seeing play. Um, but it turned out that he knew the lead singer. I mean, how cool did dad get in that moment that he knew the lead singer of the band that I was watching up on stage, right? Uh, one of my dad's favorite expressions that I always refer back to and I often share with people is my dad used to like to say that close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and at the drive-in. For those of you who haven't seen the drive-in, um, I'm sorry, you'll have to look that one up. Another person who forms part of my scrapbook and, and provided me with great memories, I showed you earlier one of my grandmother's scrapbooks. And unfortunately, she's no longer with us either, either which is why I have the scrapbook. But my grandmother um, was one of my favorite people ever. Um, I was the oldest grandchild, so I got to spend a lot of time with her. Um, and I actually made the effort to spend a lot of time with her because she lived in Thunder Bay and I lived in Winnipeg. And I once I learned to drive, I used to make a lot of trips to Thunder Bay to drive over and see her. In fact, one of my favorite memories of that, I, she knew I was coming to town at some point, but she didn't know exactly when. And so I, I drove into Thunder Bay, drove up to her place, found her in the common room of her, uh, the seniors building that she was living in. And I just kind of walked in and she leapt out of her chair, Christopher, and you know, ran over to hug me and, and it was just, I love the element of surprise. It was so much fun. Um, my grandmother also, uh, she and I, when I was um, in high school still, one summer we took a trip from Winnipeg to Vernon, BC by bus together, uh, which was fantastic. We had a great time, it was a great trip and uh, she was a great travel buddy. And one of the other things that I have to share, you about, share with you about my grandmother is she taught me the best way to eat cantaloupe. Best way to eat cantaloupe. You cut it in half, clean all the seeds out, and drop a scoop of ice cream in where the seeds were. It's like it's its own bowl. This is just another one of the memories that is up here in my scrapbook. So yes, scrapbooks can be paper, like this one. You can do all kinds of things with these wonderful pages and make them look as wonderful as you want. But don't forget that you have a scrapbook right up in here with people and places and experiences that you've had. 
And I like to live by the idea that life is meant to be experienced, not just an existence, experience life so that you can add to the pages in your scrapbook up here. That's everything that I wanted to say in today's video. As always, I do want to thank you for watching these videos. I really do appreciate it. And if you liked what you saw here, I'd love it if you clicked like down below. And I'm going to leave you with a question. What's in your scrapbook?